in this video we are going to get into a little bit of descriptive geometry more importantly auxiliary views sometimes we can't pick up everything we need to true dimensions when we just have our typical three views six views however many we need so sometimes it takes an auxiliary view to be able to see the true dimensions of a surface that is actually slanted or something along that lines. So we're gonna get started today on auxiliary views. So what is descriptive geometry? More importantly, what are auxiliary views? Descriptive geometry is a branch of geometry which allows the representation of three dimensional objects in two dimensions by using specific sets of different procedures and methods. This should sound pretty familiar to you. This is what we have done with multiviews, and multiviews are a form of descriptive geometry. Auxiliary views are pretty easy to find in a 3D CAD system such as Inventor. You can just take your models and assemblies, rotate them around, and find the correct view that you want to look at. It's not that simple in a 2D application such as AutoCAD. So what is an auxiliary view? An auxiliary view by definition is a projection on the auxiliary plane that is parallel to an inclined or slanting surface. It is a view looking directly at the inclined surface in a direction perpendicular to auxiliary projections. Auxiliaries are important for describing the true geometric shape of inclined surfaces and any features on that surface. That may seem like a lot of wording, but that is probably the most used and technical definition of what an auxiliary view is. We essentially use them to show non-basic orthographic views. We have our six principal views, front, back, top, bottom, left, and right. And anything that is not in one of those principal views that we need to view and its true size or true shape, that's when we create an auxiliary view. You can also have secondary auxiliary views, which is an auxiliary view of an auxiliary view. That gets a little more complicated. Today, we are just going to look at primary auxiliary views. So let's get started. In this drawing, you see that I have two parts, which are wedge shaped blocks. One has a hole, one does not have a hole. So we're gonna take a look at the one on the left first, which is the one without the hole. If we wanted to find this particular surface, which is the long side of the wedge, and to find its true size or its true shape, we can do that with projecting lines from this particular view. You'll see I have two phantom lines between my views. These are strictly there for a reference point for us to use when we create our actual lines. It does not matter what distance they are from my original objects. We are making lines that are perpendicular to where that particular surface is at an incline or where we see that particular surface as an edge. So looking at this part, we see this slanted edge and if we project that up into our top view, we get a foreshortened view of this edge. And that's not what we need. We need one that actually shows the true length of this edge. That's where my auxiliary view comes in. So essentially what I'm going to do is take the points from the top view and translate them to my front view and then translate those to an auxiliary view. So this phantom line that I've created here is basically going to be my fold line and you'll notice it is parallel to the surface. Again, it doesn't matter how far away it is from it. So the next thing I want to do is I wanna make sure that everything is in alignment. So I'm basically going to draw a line from here to here, and I can see that that edge is in alignment. And I'm gonna draw a line from here to here, and I can see that that one is in alignment. So I can go ahead and delete those because I'm gonna get a lot of lines on here and I don't wanna have any more lines than what are necessary. But it's very important that those align or it's not going to come out correctly. Next thing I want to do, I want to go in and make perpendicular reference lines from my edge to my fold. So if I use my line command and I go to these endpoints, I now have done that. This helps me make sure that everything is aligned whenever I prepare to make the actual auxiliary view itself. So how do we get the points from the top view to the front view? It's really quite simple. And we're going to create a quick circle here to help us. And it doesn't really matter what size the circle is. 
and then I'm going to copy that circle to each of my four points on my top view. I want to make sure that I'm aware of every single point on that surface. Therefore, that's why I put in the little circles and what they are representing. So I have four points on that particular plane and of course it's pretty easy to tell on this one because it's very simplistic. What we can do is we can go in and there's a couple of different ways we can do this. The first method is to actually do dimensions. So if I come in here to my dimension and I pick from here to here, you see I get 1.580. And then I could also dimension from here to here and I would get those dimensions. And then I could offset and get the proper dimensions for here. But there's an easier method to doing this. So in this method, what I would do is I would just draw a line down to that. So I get the same thing as my dimension. And then I would draw another line from here to here. So now I have the dimension from there to there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these down to here but I've gotta be really careful on how I do that. So I'm gonna select them, I'm gonna to go to copy, and I'm gonna pick this bottom point. So what I wanna do, it's important that I follow my line straight down and then my perpendicular line over to here. And I want to paste it over there. So what I need to do next is I need to rotate these to where they're following that same line that is perpendicular to my slope. So I'm gonna to go to rotate, and I'm gonna pick these and I'm gonna to go to this point. Now right now, if I rotate it, it's basically just going off of 0, 90, 180, et cetera. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna type in R for reference and hit enter and I can pick this point. And if I pick a point down here, now you'll see that it is going differently. And now if I pick this point, it stayed in the same alignment with this one. And since these points over here are the same as these. All I have to do is come in and do my copy and I can copy my lines up to there. So now I have them going in the right direction. At this point, all we have to do is connect the dots. So again, I'm gonna take one of my circles just so I make sure that I get all of my points and I'm gonna pick that point and that point and this point and this point. And now all I have to do is to connect all of these points. I wanna to switch to my object layer because I've been using my hidden line kind of as my guidelines. I wanna use my polyline instead of my line command because I wanna make this a continuous line type so that I can actually calculate the area of the surface of this particular view. And if I do my polyline, then it's all connected. So now I have that. You see, I have the same distance here as I have here, and I have the same distance here as I do here. So I have a true view of this surface. We can essentially use this same method with any slanted surface. So say I do want to find the area of this. The easiest way to do that is to select my box because I did it as a polyline and you'll see it gives me the area 5.9073 and then it also tells me the complete length from point to point to point to point so that's one way you can do it another way to do it if for some reason you didn't do it as a polyline is to use your hatch patterns and you want to use select because you don't want it to cut out any of these pieces in here and hit enter and again you would put it on your hatch layer and if you come down here again, you'll see it gives me that cumulative area of 5.9073. The one thing it doesn't give me doing it this way is my length of my perimeter. So it can be done either way. So now we have completed our first auxiliary view. Keep in mind, this is pretty simple. If this was an odd shape and we had some oblique surfaces, we would have to do this differently. We might potentially have some secondary views that we would have to incorporate, but we're doing basically just primary views. 
So we're ready to start the next one. The next one looks similar other than it does have a hole in it. We can see that the hole runs perpendicular to the slanted surface, which in this view gives it a foreshortened view. And we're going to start this one just like we did the last one. The first thing I want to do is I want to again make sure that everything is in alignment because if I don't, it could cause me some real headaches down the road. And if I zoom in here, everything is in alignment. So I can go ahead and delete these because we're going to have a few more lines on this one than we did on the last one. So the next thing I want to do is I want to draw a line from here to here. And I want to draw a line from here to here. So now I have the difference in the distance here for the depth of this part in that view. So again, I need to come in here and draw my perpendicular lines. Because if you remember, I have to come down, hit where it hits on this surface, and then come across. So I'm also going to need some additional ones this time. I need where my hole is at. Along with adding the lines for the holes here, I also need to do lines for my holes up here. So again, I'm going to use my line and I'm going to pick the side of the hole and I'm going to come down. And then I'm going to pick the bottom of the hole and come down. And then I'm going to pick the center of the hole and come down. I should have everything in alignment. So now I can start bringing my lines down to here. So I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to grab those and I'm going to do copy and I'm going to pick that point and again I'm going to come down, follow my angled line over to this point. The next thing I need to do is I need to rotate them to where they are perpendicular to the slanted line. So I'm going to grab them and I'm going to do rotate and I'm going to pick that point and I'm going to type in R for reference and I'm going to pick that point again and then I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick this point over here. So now I have those placed. And again, because this side is the same as this side, I'm just going to copy those up to here. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to do the same thing with my hole. So again, I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to do copy and I'm going to come from the center and I'm going to come to my center point here and come across and place those right there. So now I'm going to rotate them again about the center point and I'm going to type in R for reference and I'm going to pick this point, pick a point here and then come back over here. Now the first thing you're going to see is that this line does not line up with this and we know that this is where our whole dimension actually is and we know if it's running perpendicular to our slanted line that it's going to be a true circle. If we tried to draw this right now it would not be a true circle and that's because it's coming from a foreshortened circle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this because I know that's where it needs to be. So now again I'm going to borrow my circle from over here. I'm going to do copy and I want to make sure I get the center point and I'm going to go ahead and outline where my box is at or that rectangular surface. So again I'm going to switch to my object layer and I'm going to use my polyline and I'm going to outline the surface for this auxiliary view. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my circles to where my hole is going to be. So I'm going to use my copy command and I want to zoom in here. I want to make sure I get all of the correct points and I'm going to reduce my circles down a little bit so it makes it a little bit easier to see. So now I should be able to determine the radius of the circle from these points. If I go to my circle command and I go to center radius and I'm going to pick this point and I'm going to pick this point. And now if I look at this circle, you can see it is on that same radius. I have successfully placed the hole where it needs to be. So again, I can do my perimeter line, what the length of it is from properties. 
but in this case I can't really get the area because of the hole being in there so in this case I do want to use my hatch so I'm going to use my hatch and I'm going to do pick points and I've got to be real careful because I have a lot of areas in here that it could be cutting out and not giving me the proper area so probably what I would want to do instead of taking that chance that I was calculating it incorrectly let me undo that is for now just to calculate that area I'm just going to pull this over to the side and now I'm going to do my hatch and I'm going to do pick points and I'm going to pick right there and now I get the complete surface area again right here so in this case I did need to do the hatch because I can only get my perimeter here if you notice my area is the 4.75792 but if I click on this my area is really 4.3829 because it takes out the hole so depending on what you're trying to accomplish you might have to do one or the other what this does for me is it gives me a view that I actually see this hole in its true shape so now I could actually go to my dimensions and I could pick radius and I could pick that circle and it's going to tell me the true radius of that circle instead of seeing it in a foreshortened shape because even if I had my right view over here again it's not going to be the true radius or diameter of this hole. This was a very simplistic look at primary auxiliary views, but it gives you an idea of what can be involved. Luckily, again, most 3D programs take care of a lot of the thinking part of this for us. But again, if you're in a situation and you do have to do it with a 2D program, you will have an idea of how to do it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your assignment for today. And if we come down to auxiliaries and we go in, you're going to see the video for today. You're going to see your stuff that was due from the other day, some description of kind of what we went over here today. And now we'll look at the assignment. The assignment, you are to create a subfolder and I'm going to give you this drawing. You're going to download this drawing called primary auxiliary drawing. You're going to do a save as and save the drawing in your subfolder you created above and name the file auxiliary your initials .dwg. and you're going to study the completed exam problem on the left in the drawing assignment and complete the other four auxiliary problems so let's take a look at the assignment this is probably one of the shortest assignments you'll have in this class lucky for you guys here is an example of what you're going to be doing you're going to create the auxiliary views just like I did in the lecture you're going to solve for the true size and shape of the inclined surface and list the area and perimeter of the surface right here you're going to fill in what the area is and what the perimeter is so you're going to do that for this one you're going to complete it and then you're going to fill in the area and the perimeter and that one is worth 10 points and you're going to do the same for this with area and perimeter and the same for these so it should not be a very difficult assignment and should not take you very long to do but if you have any questions be sure to let me know as usual, make sure that your drawing is named correctly and saved in your OneDrive in the appropriate folder. Use the submit button at the upper right hand corner to submit this assignment and be sure to attach your AutoCAD drawing. This assignment is worth 45 points. The next section that we will be doing is we will be getting into AutoCAD finishing touches. This is where we're going to learn about XREFs, we're going to learn about paper space and model space and how to set up our sheets. So this is kind of the last part of what you will learn about AutoCAD specifically and then you will utilize all of that into your final project. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know.